If you've been online for the last few months, then you know that there is one big massive whopper of a change for those of us who are running Facebook ads. And that is of course iOS 14. So this is something new that is happening and is affecting every single marketer. Now over the last few months, every marketer on the planet has been running like crazy, trying to figure out a way around this specific problem. And I have figured it out. So in this tutorial i want to walk you through a remedy something that will help you to get your ads back on track and this is known as facebook conversions api now i have to warn you this is something that i learned in so many different ways i actually bought products to help me with this and now i'm teaching it to you absolutely free so follow the tutorial as i walk you through how to set up facebook conversions api so that you can scale your facebook the cat really really quickly without being heavily affected by the iOS 14 changes now before I dive onto my laptop for the tutorial I want to ask one massive favor uh, click the subscribe button and turn on your bell so that you can help me to grow this channel if you're finding any bit of value from what I'm teaching you then that would be a massive for me because I'm working hard on this channel so make sure you subscribe turn on your bell and even share this video so that we can help other marketers to grow their business let's dive into the tutorial I want to show you how to uh, how to bypass not really bypass iOS 14 but how to work with iOS 14 the best way and uh, one of those ways is using something known as a Facebook conversion API which is otherwise known as Capi or uh, Facebook API and um, you can call it that too and for that we need Zapier to do that so I'm over at Zapier and you need to have uh, a, a Zapier account, which you can open right now if you don't have one already. So in order to do this, you need to go over here to make a Zap. Okay, the first thing you need to do is you need to uh, choose your email provider. So where are people going to go once they have uh, become a lead or purchased something? So I have two email providers. I use ConvertKit and I use ActiveCampaign. For this, I'm going to use uh, ActiveCampaign over here. Then you want to trigger event. On the trigger event, what you want to do is you want to select new or updated co contacts. This means that it triggers when a new contact is added or existing contacts details are updated. So I'm gonna choose that here. Then you hit continue over here. And then over here, you want to select your account. So I should have my active campaign already inside Zapier. So I'm going to select it over here. If you don't already have this, it's going to uh, it's going to pop up and ask you to connect your active campaign account or convert kit account, Mailchimp account, whatever it is that you are using. It's going to ask you to connect that account. Once you have connected that account, you have to click on continue over here. So now you want to set up your list and everything else. Okay, so now over here, you want to choose the list. So this means it says uh, list the subscriber is added or updated and leave blank if you wish to trigger to run on all contact ads or updates. No, you don't want to leave it blank. You definitely want to choose a list. So what is the list that they get added to once that conversion happens? So I'm going to hit drop down to find any of my list for the purpose of this. I'm just going to choose uh, this one this list. The next thing you want to do is you want to choose yes to stop unsubscribe events from triggering the zap. So over here, you definitely want to choose true. The reason we're choosing true is because we don't want the unsubscribes to be pushed across because we are trying to track conversions. And as we know, when people unsubscribe, that's not a conversion. So you're going to, going to choose true over here. Then you hit continue over here. And then you want to test your trigger. So click on test trigger over here. So in the test trigger, they have found a contact. And so it's showing me all the details for the contact um, over here, which proves that you're, you know, you have selected the right account, you're in the right place, etc. So this is an important step. You hit continue over here. Now it is time to connect your next, uh, your next app to this specific event quick note about that previous step before we move forward and that is to make sure that before you set this up that you have uh, grabbed your own lead magnet you have put in an email into your your uh, your email autoresponder so that Xavier has something to pull through if it doesn't have anything to pull through it will pull nothing through so make sure you do that so anyway now we want to connect the next app which is Facebook conversions so if I start typing Facebook uh, conversions over here you're gonna see it pull up over here this is the one that you want 
So now, now that we've added Facebook conversions, it's asking me to choose an event. Now, I've added Facebook conversions over here because I had pre-added it to my uh, Zapier account. So for you, it may pull up a notification for you to actually go into Facebook and connect this. It might do it now or it might do it later. So let's see. Anyway, let's go into action events. Choose action event. There are several action events that you can choose. If you are tracking a purchase event, you choose this one. If you're tracking a lead event, you choose this one. If you're tra tracking a different funnel event, you choose this one or any other event, you choose this one. For now, I'm going to choose lead event because that is what I am tracking. Once I select that, what I want to do is hit continue over here. Okay, now this is where it's asking me to connect to my uh, Facebook conversions account. So I'm going to hit down here and I'm going to select my account and it is now that if you do not have Facebook conversions enabled, it will give you the opportunity and tell you exactly how to go over and enable it. And it is really, really easy to do. Okay, so now that I have chosen this, I'm going to hit continue over here. Okay, so we are in business. So the first thing you want to do is action source. If you hit drop down, there are many different options. Now, in all honesty, for this, you could do website. You could also do email. But for this, I'm going to do website simply because what I'm trying to track, that conversion happened on a website. Now you want to choose your business account. Word of warning, you do need a business manager. You need a business account in order for this to work. So I'm going to hit drop down. I'm going to select the business account over here. Now, it's asking me to select the pixel that I'm going to be using. And so it's brought up my pixel. I've confirmed that it's okay. It's brought up my pixel. I've confirmed that it's okay. I'm now going to select this. So we are now, I've now confirmed to Facebook that I want everything tracked on, on, uh, on a website. I want it to track from this business account and I want you to track it using this specific pixel. Okay. The first thing you want to do is event time. So you can actually leave this blank and what would, um, what Zapier will do is Zapier will just pass over um, your event time to Facebook. Now, the problem is that if you have a uh, if you have a free Zapier account, it can take up to 15 minutes for Zapier to pass over your event, which isn't really great for tr uh, conversions because you sort of want Facebook to know what's going on all the time. You know, so you can stick to your free account if you want. But um, I have a premium account, so I know that I can uh, definitely leave this blank. There is another work workaround if you do have a free account, and that is to click in here. And it's going to pull up the information of that customer. If you hit on all options over here, you can actually scroll down to find the event, the date and time that this took place. So we have over here, we have the date over here. We have uh, time over here. So you can select any of these and Zapier will pop it into uh, this section for you so that it is more accurate. But I prefer to just leave this blank. Okay, so moving down, event ID, you don't need anything there. Event source URL, you can pop in the URL, the, the, the website URL where the uh, web event happened, but I just leave that blank because that's completely fine because everything will be set up in Facebook anyway. Uh, test event code, now this is important. Uh, this code is used to signify events as test events used during test and review. So this is what just shows you that whatever you have set up, that it works. Now, the way to get this is you have to get it from Ads Manager. So if I hop back over to Ads Manager over, over here, if I go back to my business tools over here, I need to go to Events Manager. Now, mine is in my shortcut. If yours isn't there, you may have to scroll down and find it down at the bottom, but mine is over here. So I am here um, at uh, Events over here. So now you want to go to Test, oops, go over here to Test Events over here. Now scroll down to event servers. You want to copy this code, go back to Zapier and pop that code in here. This is what we're going to use to test your events and we're going to delete it after we have tested the event. Okay, so this one is all about opting out of ad delivery optimization. I'm going to choose false for this because I want Facebook to help me. I want Zapier to send information to Facebook to help me to really make my ad better for my attribution. So I'm going to choose false. I do not want to opt out of ad uh, of optimization over here. So next is data processing options. Now, this is something different. It's actually related to some new laws in California. And um, so you can just leave this blank. And if you do leave it blank, what will happen is that, um, uh, you know, the, the systems will determine if the person who is opting in is from California. And if they are, they will do what they need to do. They will do what they need to do. They will opt them out. So you can actually just leave this blank.
Moving on down, you can leave everything else as it is. You want to go over here to customer information. Now, this is where Facebook is asking you to match the information that you already have of the customer to what they have. And so, um, you know, if it's a lead event, you probably only have their name and email. So I'm going to uh, click this and I'm going to match uh, the email. So I'm going to click on all options over here. Let's find the email. So I've got contact email. Um, I don't have the phone number, so I'm going to match the first name over here. Right. So I've matched the two things that I do have. But if you were doing a purchase event, then chances are you would have their phone number, their last name, city, state, country, uh, zip code, uh, etc. You would have all of these things. Now, the next thing you want to do is to toggle true or false to display all additional customer information. And if I click down here you if I, and I and I put it on true, you'll see that Facebook asks me for various things. Sorry, Zapier asks me for various other things, date of birth, gender, login ID and all of these things, which uh, I don't have most of the those things and you wouldn't either and you don't actually need them so I'm gonna leave these as false and then move forward so now uh, we can actually move forward but if you aren't doing this for a purchase there is one more thing that I recommend you do if you're only doing this for uh, lead conversions then you don't need to do any of this and so if you're doing purchase I want to show you and that is uh, this uh, uh, additional data this is where you want to add custom parameters over here so if I open this uh, in a new tab um, you can actually see all of the custom data that you can so the first thing you want to know is the, the, the format of the value so this is the format of the numerical value that you want to enter uh, your currency you want to do that over here and if you go all the way down over here you can just read you know all the information that you need to put in but I'm actually going to show you so how do you put in your value so the first thing you want to do is to, uh, put in the word value over here then on this uh, part you want to put in the numerical so if you are selling something how much is it so let's imagine it's 14.97 then you hit this uh, plus over here then the next thing you want to put is currency and then you want to type in your currency. So if you're selling USD, uh, pop that in. Whatever currency you sell in, you want to pop that in there. Once you have done that, you hit on continue. So I'm going to remove these because I don't actually need this. I was just showing you that. But um, click on continue over here so that we can move forward. So Zapier wants to test everything that we have put in here. So I'm going to hit test and continue. Then we're going to go over to Facebook to test that we have done this correctly. So test and continue. Okay, brilliant. It says a lead event was sent to Facebook conversions just now. So this is a good confirmation. We can turn on the zap. But before turning on your zap, I do recommend that you go over to Facebook and confirm that this has happened. In all honesty, I've tested this so many times and sometimes it has, you know, it's taken a few minutes for it to happen. Sometimes it's done it automatically. Oh, it's done it automatically. Here we are, right? So we can see that a lead event has happened. It's happened on the server and it happened at exactly, you know, two minutes ago. So pretty much spot on immediately it happened. So this is where you check it on your test event where you were before. It will update and it will show that it is working so now you know that it is working now before you turn on the zap so let's go back over to uh, Zapier before you turn this on there is one more thing that you do need to do we want to go back over to remove the test event code so let me find where I popped that here we are so I want to remove this because that was only for testing I don't want Facebook to think or Zapier to think that everything that comes through is a test no that was just to confirm that I had set everything up correctly so now that I have removed that code I'm going to uh, go all the way down uh, he continues you again over here uh, everything was tested and I know that it's fine I need to turn on my zap so I simply turn on the zap over here and then it's going to turn it on let me close this name my zap so Facebook conversions API demo okay that's it and once it's done, I hit enter and it is it is done. So to see your zaps, you click on go to my zaps. And then, of course, you can see all of the zaps that you have created. It will be there turned on. So this is how you uh, create Facebook conversions API. Now, again, like I mentioned earlier, you do need to test to see whether you can you are better off using the custom conversions or Facebook conversion API. And, for, uh, you know, I've spoken to so many people who run Facebook ads on a daily basis and 
different things are working for them. And, you know, so it, it really is up to you. I would say test and check your data. Now, how do you check your data? You check your data by checking what is inside of Active Campaign or what is inside of ConvertKit, right? That's how you check your data. So you check your data to confirm that if, convert, if Facebook says that you have acquired 100 leads, for example, check inside of ConvertKit or Active Campaign or whatever your autoresponder is and check how many leads have you acquired and see if it correlates, right? If it doesn't tally up, then, you know, you want to ask yourself, was I using uh, custom conversions or was I using uh, Facebook uh, conversions API? If you were using one of those ones, you want to use the other one or switch to the other one and check your data. Basically, you want accurate data. But one thing I can assure you is that both of these methods really do work for the uh, Facebook iOS 14 update. It's just a matter of which one is going to work the best for you. So they both at 100% work. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Brilliant. Thank you so much for joining me. I want to turn your attention to this tutorial where I share all about how to run Facebook ads or how, how I run Facebook ads so profitably for my clients and for my own business. So if you want to discover how to do that or how I do it, make sure you catch this tutorial and I'll see you in my next video.